backgrounds uh, uh, now with uh, with Skype. Very cool. Oh, I know. I, I have a real background. Uh, <laughs> I'm not That's as very cool. cool. As you. <laughs> yeah, but that background does fit you, and uh, you kind of your motif. Kind of, so yeah, maybe it's <laughs> like it was all a plan. <laughs> um, maybe it was. <laughs> can you hear me okay? Because I was worried about this um, setup because there's a bit of loud noise outside um, yeah. my window, and I didn't know if it could pick it up or not. But if it's if this is okay, then that's cool. If not, I can go to somewhere quieter. No, 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 this is perfectly fine. You're being way too nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're being way too nice, way, way, way too. Um, no, 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 Every, everything's fine. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Uh, really enjoy your sound. Um, and, uh, of course, I'm talking with Sina Bordello of Black Bordello. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the show earlier in the program. Uh, I got to play a few cuts from your um, debut album, which I was very excited to uh, play. The last song, though, that I just played uh, was uh, the song uh, Backache, which I, you just released the video to. I got yeah. to see that video. It was super cool, super yeah. lavish. Um, we're, we're, when you released that video, was that what you were thinking uh, when uh, they pitched the idea of the video to you? Um, so I worked on uh, the... I worked on Backache with one of my really close friends, uh, Matty, um, and she she basically... Uh, we went to art school together like five, six years ago, and um, she basically... Uh, I, I pitched the song to her, but the song is actually... come. It comes out of a really dark place, and comes out of a sort of like um basically I guess like a depression and it's about like breaking out of that depression um but like really when I write songs they are like open to interpretation so um she kind of saw this whole idea of this high society um group of people that um and then there's one person that breaks out of that that at the end, which is kind of what happens in the video. So even though it's not what I with music videos, it's it's never what exactly what you think when you're writing right. a song. It's almost like a completely different work in itself when it becomes a video. It's like, um, you know, it's a completely different thing. So I really like the way that a group of people got together. I mean, like our our crew was like 25 people, and um like just like the you know directors and the producers and they all like had an idea of what the song meant to them so even though it was quite different from from like where it came from within me i think like the end result is just like a complete different thing but it works in my opinion did you enjoy wearing those outfits uh those, those <laughs> pastime outfits um like i'm gonna say physically no but like conceptually, yes. Like especially the scene where like they're tightening my corset because there's this guy, there's this girl called um, Florence Grelia, and she um, is a really talented um, uh, fashion designer. Basically, she just she just um, graduated from uh, I think it was London College of Fashion, but I might have got that wrong. But yeah, anyway. Um, she basically uh, has all these, like, we, we rented a lot of, like, period costumes, which include, like, corsets with real whalebone in them. And um, wow. so I had to wear one with whalebone in it, and it was, like, digging in, and then they were tightening it even more in the seat. <laughs> and then by the end, I was like, I actually can't breathe. And then they were like, yeah, imagine what the, the Victorian women felt like. <laughs> so, um <laughs> Yeah. I'm, I'm sure I, I'm sure those women, though, back in the day, I mean, they were just used to it because that was just part of the norm. You know, at first when they're kids, you know, uh, they just get used to it. You only had to do it for a day or two. So you didn't yeah. get a chance to, you know, really uh, um, bask in that. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it's funny because I was watching that and listening to your music. Do you feel that you were born in the wrong era? <laughs> um yeah I think I I mean I'm starting to 
change my mind a bit about that because um yes in the sense that all of my influences are from a completely different time and um but and also like I do feel quite disillusioned in the world that we live in at the moment and that's where a lot of the music comes from but the, at the same time Black Bordello in my opinion fits into this world so well because so many things are like falling apart and the project itself is about coping with things falling apart and like processing it and fighting against it and um so yeah so i mean in a sense it does feel like um it's happening at the exact right time but also because like i mean i've been influenced on science fiction i'm influencing like alien by aliens and and like weird kind of you know weird apocalyptic worlds and stuff like that I've always loved that sort of thing and I've always loved Greek mythology and tragedy and when I look at the world now all I see is tragedy and um so I think it's happening at the right time in in the sense that I mean it's not all doom, doom and gloom but we are more aware of what's going on in the world at the moment we are sort of and like truth has sort of died so we're kind of in this world where you have, you have to create your own reality and it wasn't so much the case back in in the times where where like I'm really into kind of pre-war jazz and I'm also really into like 70s psychedelia and prog and rock and all of that stuff but at the same time this project probably wouldn't have been appreciated you know in in those times and I wouldn't have the freedom you know as a woman to do do what I'm doing now so um it would be yeah. ironic because uh, then if you were back in those times, it'd be like, she's ahead of her time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's that uh, duality uh, that sometimes you have to face. You know, you bring something up uh, really interesting. And I read this. It was one of the most fascinating things uh, that I found out about you, um, which was, I, I guess, uh, let me just look at my notes really quick. And it was because I have it written down. I just want to make sure I get the, this uh, right. And okay. it was. It was about you. And it was about um, you wanting to. There it is. OK. You, 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 there was a point in your life where. You didn't know. If, if you wanted to keep on doing this and what was that moment where that doubt turned into undoubt, I, I, I guess is, is, is the word that I'm looking for because a lot of people go through that struggle and sometimes they just give in and say, you know what, I'm done making music or I'm done doing whatever. Uh, what was it that you found out, in your search that made you turn that around? Um, okay, so like, I, I, I don't come from a music background like a lot of people that I work with. Um, and so I felt like this massive imposter syndrome whenever I was in a music environment. But ironically, even though I felt so uncomfortable doing it, it was the only thing I wanted to do and the only thing I was happy doing. So um, I would like, and I obviously was really into jazz. Um, so I started, um, you know, sitting in at uh, jazz places in London and I'm trying to get in with that scene. And like, I felt that um, I was sort of a little bit ostracized for not try not doing things the way everyone else did them. And um, that's when I was sort of like, oh, I'm not getting anywhere with this. Maybe I should just give up. Maybe I should do what what I was doing before, which is a mixture of like, um, you know, wait waitressing and um, and like, um, you know, painting, doing oil oil paintings, and so I, so I was like, I didn't really know whether to do that um, because I I'd leave places and I'd feel really like, you know, people would, I don't know, you just you just get this sense that and that the comments that people make to you and the way that they have. So, so like cliques I guess like where you know everything's as it is and there was one time I got thrown out of Ronnie Scott and <laughs> I was like <laughs> I like not physically obviously okay I was like whoa <laughs> um 
and um and I and then it was that point where I was like you know I, I don't know whether this is um the right if, if people are like this in this industry maybe this isn't the right industry for me maybe it's too much stress um and so I basically um then I I went to New Orleans and um I have a really great relationship with New Orleans and it kind of gave me my confidence back and I kept going there and um started to realize that yeah I could I was in the wrong I was with the wrong people in the wrong places and um and then also my we as a band Black Bordello are just like such a close knit group of people that they really gave me the confidence to be like, actually, you don't need to come from these music schools that everybody is coming from. That's why we want to be in a band with you because you sound different and the songs you're writing are different. And that gave me a lot of confidence as well. Um, so yeah, and then I, I, I kind of tried to like not do music for a bit and it didn't work out well. I just got depressed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and then I just kind of gave up um, but also, like, I guess one of the things as well was that uh, my family um, are like, you know, I get, my family came from Cyprus and um, and they don't, I mean, I guess they didn't really understand. My parents didn't really understand that one could forge a career in music and they really wanted me to um, to kind of get a real job and support the family. And um, but. I think, and then it was my dad mainly that was kind of apprehensive about it, and but he unfortunately passed away. But one of the last conversations I had with him was, um, you know, about four years ago. Well, yeah, nearly four years ago now. And he he said, actually, you are really good at this. Do it. Just I regret so much in my life not doing the things I wanted to do. So I've told you your whole life not to do this, but now you should do it. <laughs> so then I was like, yeah, maybe I should do it. <laughs> Um, well, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad that happened, and uh, he was able to tell you those things. I know a lot. It's weird because a lot of our lives, we look at our parents, and we don't want them to judge us, but we want them to acknowledge us and acknowledge the fact that uh, what we're doing with our life is is right. And it's it's so weird to come up living from then as, as it is to now, my parents are a lot older, so they don't understand kind of uh, what I'm doing, but they're very supportive. And I think that is one of those uh, key factors in not, not just in your life, but in anybody's life that's uh, trying to do something that is outside the norm. Mm -hmm. um, it, it pushes against so many everything because just because you're not seeing a physical paycheck doesn't mean you're not getting an emotional paycheck. And I think sometimes people try to compensate their emotions with, with, with pay when it should be the other way around. You know, mm. I think that's way more important uh, in life. And, I, and I'm certainly so glad that you have come to that uh, part in your life. If you don't mind me asking, um, how old are you? I'm 24 years old. Wow, at 24 yeah. to have such realizations, man, yeah. I am so excited for your career and, and, and for everything you're doing. Your music is, is uh, I've described it as squankalicious. I don't know <laughs> if that's a real term or not, but it's very swanky. I really I've enjoy never, it. I've never had that one before, I must say. <laughs> but I also, like, like, quite commonly just can't, tell people what type of music I make so maybe I should start saying that <laughs> just do it man just, just <laughs> ha start hashtagging it swankalicious and okay <laughs> voila you're welcome you're welcome yeah, thank you <laughs> <laughs> when you go on your swankalicious tour just remember me get me a ticket <laughs> okay I want to see that you that's, gonna be... <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be super cool but seriously how do you uh, mend all these like you have like goth and you have rock and you have vaudeville how do you bend all that together? I mean, obviously you do, but I mean, is that somewhat of a, uh, a conscious thing? Um, I, I don't think it's that conscious. Like, um, it's, it's a combination of like different backgrounds of people in the band. So like in the band, there's four of us, there's myself, um, 
there's Eddie Amos, who's the drummer, there's Anthony Boatwright, who's the bassist, and then there's Henry Carpenter. So Eddie, the drummer, comes from uh, like a different background. He's done classical, he's done alternative pop, he's done soul, he's like, he went to the Brit school and um, that, you know, where sort of like Amy Winehouse and people kind of came <laughs> from. And, um, and then basically he um, is, and then there's Anthony, um, who has like a, he went to BIM and he's got lots of different um, kind of glitchy, um, like uh, kind of, he's into soundscapes, he's into sound art, he's also into indie, but he's also into like um, alternative rock, but also electronic music. And then Henry, the keyboard player, he's from, um, he, he comes from a musical theater background. He used to have this alternative persona called um, Jimmy Getaway. And uh, he also started, like, he had a West End musical um, called The Quentin Denton Show, which he wrote and starred in. And um, then he, like, he became this character for a while. And now he's, like, um, he's actually writing, like, a, a musical for the Beatles, wow. which has been, like, the it's just now the official, like, Beatles musical, which is going to be... No way! On West End, yeah. So he's, so we are coming from all different aspects, but we all have lots of things in common, um, like I was a choral singer and I came from an opera background, uh, but then I went to jazz and also like my personal preferences are like, like rock and heavy metal. So <laughs> I was like, I don't know, there's, it was all kind of merging together, but it took a while for us to get comfortable realizing that we weren't trying to spit, fit into a specific genre that we were like happy being, um, in kind of different um, you know, being different genres and, and like more than anything, being our own genre because all of my favorite bands sort of created a genre, like, um, and like I'm not trying to put ourselves like on that level because right. I think you have to be a really, you have to be really pioneering a scene to be able to do that. But I think also, like, a lot of people start bands and they go, I'm going to start a shoegaze band or I'm going to start a post-rock band and then they just go through all the people that have like made music like that before and then they you know they end up having that it's a barrier it's like a box you're making music within a box and like I think I don't want to do I've never really wanted to do that and I've been more interested in breaking that box and like breaking the barriers a little bit so yeah it it seems that you are and again you know when I heard your music I've I haven't heard anything like that, and I was just really uh, fascinated and uh, wanted to get you on the show and uh, have your band and showcase your band uh, to show people uh, what's out there and what is is just uh, able to expand people's minds and palettes in music. And I'm so glad uh, I was able to talk to you today. Uh, with all of our crazy uh, technology and everything like that, yeah. um, it was funny because like we were talking. I'm like, maybe she's into technology. So I'll pitch this idea or this idea. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm still well, like, like I wanted to do the Instagram live thing. It's just like I tried to do it once before and like it, it like glitched. No worries. Like it's <laughs> cool. I like I I like this kind of form of interview. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'm gonna just uh, two last things. One is uh, I'm I'm your your band comes from your family's restaurant and with everything going on right now, I wanted to get an update and see how your family and your restaurant is doing with everything going on. Um, yeah. So, I mean, the band doesn't really have any like direct affiliation to the restaurant. It, it's like this, I, this restaurant that my dad started, Il Bordello, uh, it's Italian. And, um, and like it, it's also got a lineage like the meaning of the word bordello means like traditionally a brothel but also italians refer it to as a, a place of like a crazy place and like a, a house where specifically like a house where things are going on and like it's all a bit of a you know a, a, i guess i guess i felt a, a little bit in my family like i was in a sort of bordello not yeah. not in the traditional sense <laughs> right, of the right, word, right. but like in a, in a chaos um in a good way chaos and sometimes not in a good way but you know um 
the the restaurant's okay like it's doing well at the moment um and uh we luckily we were i was actually working in there during the lockdown and i would go in with like plastic all over me <laughs> like plastic <laughs> suit visors gloves everything um and we'd be like we doing takeaway so luckily a lot of the the people would come and um uh like do t- you know come and pick up food because they they wouldn't want to cook so we were still trying to give you know italian food to <laughs> the people of east london so yeah that was that was cool and i'm glad it's doing well as well um it's pretty busy at the moment because the government here in the uk are doing this thing called eat out to help out where like they subsidize half of the cost of your meal oh, when wow. you go somewhere so you, people are just going crazy for eating out so because everything's half price um so yeah <laughs> but thank Man, you for talking about yeah, that yeah 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 no worries i was just curious with, with restaurants uh you know, I, I've worked in restaurants before and little cafes mm. and I go and this is for everybody. You know, I'm, I'm very into eating local these days. And if anything, this this whole situation has made me not eat, um, uh, you know, conglomerates or anything like that. I don't mm. I don't do chains. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm really into going and supporting the local uh, places and establishments around me and i encourage people not only listening but watching this video as well uh to go and actually help the little guy out those guys are the ones that need it out so you know so that's a plug for you guys too Mm. or what in the uk yeah (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean like it's kind of like a lot of the places around us are like um you know chains and we are quite proud to be an independent place as you say family run like after my father passed away my brother sister and I um took over the running of the restaurant and um definitely also like I feel like there's there's definitely a culture that surrounds the restaurant it's like people that are a bit different go there and that they kind of want a different experience and they want um you know like a there's a cult yeah there's like a culture that surrounds it so it's it's quite nice to see that developing like we you know we get a lot of musicians come there as well <laughs> like crazy that's, that's perfect my, my brother's like a... a musician as well so it's okay. like they they probably know it as the restaurant that's run by musicians that had to pretend had to like learn how to be restaurant <laughs> um, really quickly <laughs> But that's cool because, I mean, you never know when inspiration will strike or you never know when a musician will come in and you guys just make a, a, a song like right there or something. So, <laughs> I, I, if anything, that's a great idea, you know. You should publicize that a little bit more, you know. Like, yeah. hey, musicians, uh, you know, <laughs> like come in and play a song or help me out on this song, this track, and I got your next linguini or something like that. So, <laughs> I think that would be cool. Uh, thank you again so much. Uh, again, blackbordello.co.uk is where you can find out more information. I have all the links on the video. Just the, just click down there, and then you're going to be able to see the links to their Spotify and their Bandcamp and whatnot. I highly recommend this album. It's something very different, and, and, and we need that these days. We need to feel um, that we are not different, but that we can listen to different things. I feel so many times pigeonholing ourselves with the types of genres of music that we listen to. We always need to expand our palate, much like food. We also have to expand that as well. So uh, make sure to go check them out and help them out and, uh, you know, buy their their new debut album uh, that is uh, currently out. Uh, My guest has been Sina Bordello. Thank you again Thank for coming you. on the show really enjoy your music and um yeah, yeah thank We're you again. also um just quickly mentioning that we are also making one we st- started making a new body of music uh a, a new uh album which we're starting recording on friday but also um we are playing some if on our facebook page i think we're doing like an online festival um, with some other really great acts. It's called Farm Fest. So that will be on our social media. <laughs> cool. I will have all the links to the show notes. Make sure to go check them out. 
Um, that which reminds me, last question, I swear, last question. What is your live shows uh, about? I've, I've not, I haven't seen you guys live or, or any videos, so uh, if you can explain what that would uh, kind of entail. Oh, well, like, we actually, like, are firstly a live band, like, and then a recorded band. Like, I would say that you never really get a sense of what we're like until we play live because we tend to like be a lot more experimental like we've got sometimes we have like um our friend arthur bentley who's a saxophonist um and he you know we 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 get a lot of energy i guess i like that about the way we play because it's like very performative and high energy um and yeah like one of our favorite favorite venues to play at in london is the brixton windmill and um uh, we had like a really great show just before the whole world shut down, um, which was with uh, this uh, with one of my favorite musicians, um, Ben Wallers, who's uh, who plays as the Rebel, but he used to be in a band called the Country Teasers, um, and yeah, so they they were playing. He was playing like Country Teasers music and stuff, um, and he headlined the show, and we that was like a sellout. Um, gig and we had like it was just packed which was so fun because you always like you liked uh, I like playing when like the monitors are like falling in on us and beers <laughs> being spilled everywhere um, and it feels so it's glad I'm happy that was our last gig because it was such a great one but um, I just can't wait for that to be happen again I'm just like crossing my fingers every day that we'll be able to be in a sweaty room, like, all, like, <laughs> pushed together again. Because that's, like, when people are jumping around yeah. and that's just, like, the best thing ever. But, um, yeah, and, like, we actually had a, a tour planned and I think we couldn't, we couldn't do it, but I think we might um, do that next year. And um, we, I w I'm planning to do some stuff in the U.S. So, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, gotta come we'll... to LA. Gotta come to LA. Let yeah. Me know. Let me know. I'll be there with a a, a whalebone corset for you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be great. Oh god. Yeah. No, that'd be great. That'd be so fun. <laughs> cool. Uh, thank you, Sina Bordello, again. Pleasure meeting you, and uh, thank you for coming on. Uh, I'm very humbled uh, by your talent and uh, by um, yeah, you just. Uh, acknowledging me and wanting to be a part of the show it's a very oh, flattering thing. my pleasure thank you <laughs> okay thank you well thanks take care yeah bye